witches how you doing today we're back with another video and today I want to talk about something that has been a huge focus lately in my practice in my witchy life um, that's foraging obviously we're in the middle of summer so um, I've been camping out in the woods I take my dog to the river valley every weekend Right, just did a video a couple weeks ago about forage with me, uh, taught a class on Wednesday about urban foraging, took them out this morning to do some river valley foraging. Uh, yeah, so it's been a huge focus uh, this time of year. And I thought, let's talk about foraging. Um, let's talk about how you determine your own correspondences for items that you foraged. And of course, that will lead us to some book recommendations for foraging. So before we get into it, for those of you who are new around here, my name is Taya. Welcome to the channel where we talk about all things witchcraft. And for those of you who are returning viewers, maybe coming in from another video, uh, welcome back. The support is very much appreciated. And all of you, please consider subscribing. It's a really great way to help us build the channel. So foraging. First, I want to give you a little bit of my foraging philosophy, if you will. So Forging is part of building a relationship with the land upon which we live, which is a really important tenant in traditional witchcraft. Uh, and then what it leads you to do is you're bringing in and working with the plants, the plant spirit allies that make up your genius loci, the spirit of the place where you live. And those are the strongest spirit allies you can work with, right? Those that you share, share a habitat with, um, right? You, without even thinking about it, you already have a relationship with those, those plants. And what it does is it brings the genius loci and the specific spirits of your plant allies into your practice and into your spell work. So it's a really nice way to sort of capture and round out your practice. So when I forage, I go out and rather than going, oh, I need this herb, I'm going to go forage for it. Um, I tend to go out and just see what's on offer from the genius loci at different points throughout the year. And I harvest what's offered. I bring it home. I dry it. I prepare it, whatever. And then I work it into my practice. Right. If that makes sense, rather than going about it the other way about going out to look for specific things, I see what has been offered and I, I bring that into my into my practice. So typically I am harvesting and then determining correspondences for whatever it is that, that I've harvest harvested. So. Oftentimes what people will do is just look up the correspondences right? Just go online or get a book like Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs and just look up the magical correspondences, right? Now, sometimes what happens when you're working with a lot of local plants, which are oftentimes considered to be weeds, right? A weed is just a plant where you don't want it. Um, oftentimes you can't find ma specific magical correspondences or you can find them, but I think we can build a closer relationship with our plant allies. We can dig a little bit deeper um, and build a personal relationship with that plant, if that kind of makes sense, right? Um, rather than just going, oh, boom, that's what it's good for because somebody on the internet said so. It's about really digging deep and figuring out what's going on with that plant and what it can offer to you. And I think that what a specific plant can offer to each practitioner can vary. Um, I mean, not, not to the extent that, right, some people are gonna use chamomile for protection while other people are using thistle, uh, right? Chamomile probably isn't a protection type of herb, but there's subtle nuances, right, to what you, can be using different plants for and what they might call to you specifically to use them for. So typically when I am looking up my herbs, sorry, I'm just like trying to figure out where to put my notes so I can get my hands going. So obviously, yes, I am going to look up magical herbs. So I have the Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs by Scott Cunningham great book. It's a really good starting point. It's got lots of great folklore in it. It's got, um, yeah, all kinds of interesting tidbits about different plants and magical correspondences. 
So, I mean, it's a great place to start, right? You can also start doing an internet research. Maybe you've got, oh, 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 I can't reach it. Um, the Llewellyn's Book of Correspondences, which has a ton of different plants in it, right? And But I mean, you pull that up and it's gonna give you like 20 to 30 different correspondences for a single plant. Again, wh what is that, like that's so broad, right? You wanna narrow that down a little bit. What are you going to use it for? So that's a good place to start, right? Is going, okay, well, here's some like magical uses. The next thing I'll look up is the medicinal and edible uses. So I have here edible and medicinal plants of Canada. Uh, you can buy, these are by Lone Pine, Lone Pine Press. And you can buy these guides for all different regions. I'm sure they have them in the States as well. Lone Pine Press. So this is edible and medicinal plants of Canada. And it's a beautiful guide. It's got lovely colored photographs and all kinds of interesting stuff in it. Um, so I'll look up the medicinal and edible uses of a plant. Another really great resource, uh, this, is, this is just for kind of more my area, but it's about the boreal herbal. Uh, so if you live in kind of Canada in the boreal forest, which is where I live, uh, really, really great ex, uh, resource. So it's the boreal herbal, wild food and medicine plants of the north, a guide to harvesting, preserving and preparing by Beverly Gray excellent book if you live up in this area and I'm sure there's other like for different areas right you're gonna find very spe specific sorts of information and then the other thing I like to do so we've got magical uses we've got medicinal and edible uses and probably the most valuable information I can look up on a plant is its indigenous uses so I have this book just kind of hard to come by, but it is Native American Ethnobotany by Daniel E. Mormon. It is a phenomenal book. It is a compendium of almost every plant you're going to find in North America and what its indigenous uses broken down by different types. So Daniel Mormon actually went around and did this ethnobotany botanical research by visiting different tribes and learning about what they did with different um, different plants, different trees, all kinds of um, botanical things. So there's food, medicines, dyes, things they used to make weapons and tools, things they used um, yeah, medicinally, um, all kinds of things. Um, yeah. And so anyways, it gives you a really interest uh, spiritually. What did they use different herbs for? Um, so again, it's really um, interesting because if you think about it, the indigenous peoples of North America are the original stewards of the land. They have literally lived and worked with the plants here for tens of thousands of years. So of course they are going to have some really good information about what those different native plants and plant species can be used for. Um, so yeah, I know I had one, it was a type of mushroom. And it, yeah, it doesn't show up in any like magical correspondences list. It, um, I do have a, spe a like specific mushroom book that gave me a little bit of information about the mushroom, but really not a whole lot. But when I looked at the indigenous uses, one of them was, oh, and I can't remember exactly how it was worded, but something along the lines of it was for, um, it was used in death rites. That was it. It was used in funeral rites to, um, it, 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 its spores were used to mark people, um, when they were deceased for their funeral rites. How amazing is that? I'm like, oh, so I could use the spores of this particular mushroom in my work with the ancestors, with the dead, um, right? I could use it maybe in contacting the dead. Uh, but again, right, it gave me a really great avenue to figure out how to use this, this mushroom, this plant that had been presented to me in my practice by the genius loci. It was like, here, ta-da, like here it is for you. You figure out how to use it and it will pull that genius loci into my work. That kind of makes sense. So I thought, let's do an example with something super common. How about the dandelion, the common dandelion? So first we look up dandelion in Cunningham's Encyclopedia of Magical Herbs. And he says, 
that its magic, uh, its powers are divination, wishes, and calling spirits. Magical uses are to find out how long you will live, blow the seeds off the head of a dandelion. You'll live as many years as there are seeds left on the head. Uh, the root, when dried and roasted and ground like coffee, is used to make a tea, and this infusion will promote psychic powers, and the same tea, steaming in place beside the bed, will call to spirits. Uh, and a dandelion buried in the northwest corner of the house brings favorable winds. That's a bit of the folklore from, from this book. Kind of interesting. Um, edible and medicinal plants of Canada. Oh, they took it out. I took out my... I had it all marked off in here and I took it out. Well, basically what it tells you in here is that you can, you can eat it. You can use it for a tea. Um, it has calming properties and it can be used. I think that was, I think that was about it, but it was mostly about medic uh, medicinal and like, just like you, oh, you could make teas, you can make wines, you can make jellies, that kind of stuff. And then in the book on the Native American ethnobotany, um, it was used medicinally by various different tribes for as a sedative to calm the nerves. This is dandelion. Um, it was used as blood medicine uh, for pain relief, for gastrointestinal issues, for liver and kidneys um, issues. And it was just a, a lot of tribes used it as a, to create a general tonic, just a general tonic to well-being. Um, in foods, they ate all parts of the dandelion, the leaves, the roots, the stems, the flowers, the buds, you name it. It was all used for food. And it is, and that is something I was going to say from uh, this book here, is that the whole plant is edible. It is all safe to eat. And this is really interesting. The Iroquois used dandelion as a witchcraft medicine. So I'm going to read to you exactly what it says. A decoction of the roots was used as a wash for an anti-witch medicine. That's really interesting. So that to me brings in a little bit of protective magic from, from the dandelion. It's an anti-witch medicine. Kind of interesting, right? So if you do just a general search, um, right, just looking for like magical correspondences of dandelion, you find creati creativity and inspiration, insight, clarity, and divination, and it's good for ancestral or spirit work. Um, and that was all it said, ancestral or spirit work. So again, like, how do I work that in? What do I do with it? Um, and the other thing I found was that dandelion means dent de lion, which means lion's tooth, which equates to courage and confidence. And then we can also pull in personal gnosis. Like, what do we all know just generally about dandelions? Um, if you take that poofy seed head and you blow on it, you make a wish and you blow on it, your wishes can come true. You're sending your wishes out to the world. And the other thing, and this is something I like to look at, is its root. And it has that really deep tap root. And it's a very anchored, very strong plant. And if you pull it and you don't pull out all that root, the plant will grow back. It's very tenacious. So it will be good for anchored and strong spell work. Um, and because it's that tap root and it's going down into the earth, it brings in the other world. Um, working with ancestors or the other world with the dead or the fae. Um, and indeed, dandelion is considered a fairy flower. So that gives us all kinds of different uses for dandelion. So you could create, um, you could harvest some dandelion, just the yellow tops, right, when they're in season. No green, just the yellow tops, and create a divination tea. You can do it by roasting the roots and going through all that, but you can actually just use the tops, the yellow, the yellow petals, to create like a divination tea. Um, you could dry the roots for future work to bring in strength, courage, and confidence, or for ancestral and spirit work, or as an addition to deeply anchor a spell. Like if you want a spell to be tenacious and anchored and strong, and like maybe somebody's gonna brush it off, like, oh, you know, I'm gonna brush off that spell, and you're like, no, I need it to keep acting, right? Unless you pull it out of the root, it's gonna keep growing back. It's a great way to use dandelion. 
and you could dry the leaves and use them for future work to bring in solar energy, inspiration, creativity. So there's all kinds of different ways to sort of work through it and determine your correspondences. But I really want to encourage you to go that little bit further and really delve into what those plants are used for. And oh, I forgot to mention, um, sit with the plant, right? Whether it's the plant that you've just harvested or before you harvest it and talk to the spirit, talk to the spirit ally of that plant. And they like, what are you good for? You know, or maybe it's like, I've got all these correspondences, but you know, this particular plant that I've harvested, what are your strengths? What are you really here to bring to my practice? And really delve a little bit deeper than just pulling something off the off the interwebs and going, oh yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to use it for. Really build a relationship with that spirit ally and do some research and dig a little deeper and see what it's for. Okay, um, so yeah. Do you forage? Are you, you know, building a relationship with the land upon which you live? I'd love to know. Leave us some comments. How do you determine your correspondences, um, right? Are you kind of just at, like, I'll just do some quick research or do you tend to like delve a little deeper and get all the details and, you know, or are you like a communing with the spirit of the plants kind of person? Like, how do you do it? I'd love to know. Um, and yeah, that's our video for today. So thanks so much for hanging out, you guys. And we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks so much.